away from the community there and their efforts to come to terms with what's happened. There, of course, have been violence. There's been disorder. We're joined now by Lord Walney, who's the government's independent advisor on political violence and disruption. Very good morning to you, and thank you for your time this morning. Given what's happened over the past few days, I, I just want... Have you had occasion to offer advice or had conversations with the Home Secretary or the Prime Minister? Well, it, it, in a way, there is a... It, the review which I submitted to the government uh, literally uh, 24 hours before the general election and which the incoming government have said that it, it will look at carefully has a number of recommendations that are pertinent in, uh, in this regard. And I really welcome the leadership that's shown by Keir Starmer um, and the Home Office ministerial team in the last 24 hours, particularly honing in on the need to stop the, the known troublemakers who are clearly exploiting the, the grief and, and, and tension that are felt in Southport and, and across the country to use um, the, the, the cover of protest as a, 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 as a platform for deliberate violent disorder and we need to stop those people from being able to, to get to, uh, to travel to those places and, and whip up unrest. Yes, and we, we heard from Keir Starmer about this new National Violent Disorder Unit, mm. and that's very much looking forward. You could, you could tell there was, uh, I think, a degree of anger in his voice when he was talking about this. Yeah. That is something that is ongoing and they'll be working on. I mean, today, tomorrow, the weekend. Yeah. Do you think that the, the enough measures are in place and the police have the resources necessary in the immediate term? Because the evidence we've seen is that in Southport, for example, they really struggled to cope yeah. with what was an unprecedented and presumably, and I don't know what you think, but maybe a slightly unexpected scenario. Well, I, I mean, I, I think certainly there was a, a level of volatility in Southport, which which may have taken the um, the police somewhat by, by surprise. But but clearly there is intelligence that these gatherings um, and 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 the tension of the week is being very deliberately exploited by by far-right groups. And there are, I think, a number of powers that the police have to be able to uh, to try to keep things under control. I would like to see them using the maximum, to the maximum effect, the existing powers in the Public Order Act, which, where there is a, a threat of, of serious disorder, they um, people have the power to refuse um, uh, protests. And, and what is happening here it, it is not legitimate protest in in any way. The prime minister was very was absolutely right to say this. We have a, a fundamental right to protest embedded in our liberal democracy. It is not a right to riot. It is not a right to criminality. And what is happening at the moment is not protest. And and so the police, I think. Well, I hope we'll be we'll be looking carefully at what's happened over the last few days and be thinking, uh, actually, I hope to more preventative measures rather than allowing large large and and volatile crowds to gather and then seeing things kick off. I hope they will do everything in their power actually to prevent getting into this this, this situation in the first place. Now, I know you've got a long history of advising on these issues. In your experience and given what you're seeing literally over the past few days and probably over, over the recent past, do you see a clear rise? And a lot of people are scared of some of the scenes they're seeing, these groups that are gathering sporadically in places. Are you seeing a clear rise in that kind of behaviour? What you've had over recent years is that organisationally the far right has been at a relative low ebb and, and um, organisations, parties, movements have, have, have formally uh, disbanded or become defunct. But what has, what has been made clear this week is that, the, that uh, those forces... Um, that ideology, those individuals are still absolutely there and can move very quickly and form into, into new groups. So, I mean, I guess for, to people looking at this, it would not have been a, a surprise that you can, you can have this uh, activity. What I think your, um, your really moving package before this showed is that the 
um, that violence from a, a, a small minority can have a devastating effect, but is absolutely anathema to the overwhelming majority of people in communities that are affected and may be worried about particular issues. And so the challenge now for all of us, for, uh, for lawmakers, for the, for the government, for the police, for communities themselves, is how do you empower and protect that mainstream majority that may have legitimate worries but you know absolutely want to be peaceable and live alongside their neighbors and how do you shut out uh, and prevent this kind of violent disorder that is being uh, being pushed by a far right which unfortunately we have seen this week are still very much uh, around in our midst Lord Walney, thank you for your time this morning. Lord Walney is a political violence and disruption advisor to the government. Thank you for your time. Thanks.